Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. This year, Snap-on's new PT338 Stubby Impact Wrench went on sale, and it's demanding a pretty steep price tag at $500, making it far and away the most expensive compact mini stubby impact on the market now. So does that compare to the Mako Stubby we'll also be testing for the first time, which was sort of holding that title up till now at $373? Today we find out and in the process accidentally kill one of these impacts that were lent to us on the dyno and we scramble to make things right again. This is the Mako MT2765G, G being for green. A kind viewer by the name of Joseph sent us this one and we're glad he did because this stubby impact has a reputation for being the baddest boy on the playground when it comes to compacts and its specs would lead you to a similar conclusion as well. Not that we put much weight in those on this channel. They advertise 550 working torque and 700 foot-pounds breakaway torque. This sort of IR style push button forward reverse and rear dial power selector is one of our preferred design types, though we hope it doesn't perform like an IR with their 35 Max Mini being really quite a letdown on this channel compared to its specs and really most of the tools on our rank chart. The Mako is four and a half inches long, which is what most of the air compacts measure it seems but still a bit longer than the shortest one we've tested, which is still the Astro Nano. That four and a half inches long is a bit deceiving though, as Mako is sort of a chunker, everything is just a little bit extra on her. Hoping that spells big power though, coming up on the dyno. The next compact hoping to catapult itself up on top of our rank chart is the PT338. This one was kindly sent to us by John N, and very kindly indeed, as it retails for $500. This one is made in the same US plant making the PT650, which is a sort of dead giveaway based on its looks. It's of course 3 8 drive, the only drive size they offer on this new stubby, but as we found out in Force Science Episode 9, anvil size alone doesn't really play too much of a role in power delivery, which we confirmed on a stubby impact as well. Although some manufacturers do make their 3 8 drive impacts different power, check out that episode to find out more. Snap-on being a latecomer to the compact game, hope to bring something new to the table with motor size and vein count, as you'll see here. Similar components, but there is a stark contrast. Right, so air comes obviously into the tool, spins past this, hits the rotors, and that's how everything spins, right? So this is essentially the motor of the tool. So height-wise, not too much difference. Ours is a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. but what you really notice is the diameter of the motor. That's where the big difference is. So we also precision machine these in Murphy, North Carolina, and because we can have such tight tolerances and make that rotor bigger, we can deliver more power, more RPM, to the tool. And I'm seeing six of, what are these called? Those are the veins. So that's how essentially the motor spins up. So when air comes through, it's you know just like a fan. It's pushing it around, making that motor move. So we have eight, competitors will have less or six in this case. So it's not really just motor length here, which you'd hope not considering you don't want compacts to be too long, but motor diameter being at play and the number of motor vein fins. We tested, motor swapped, ported, and polished a NASCAR gun not too long ago and found adding a higher vein count motor can increase performance, but once we got to seven versus eight vein motors, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of difference being seen there. And while this PT338 is rocking eight, and many compacts we've tested are five or six vein, this Mako stubby that we're using today is already pretty modern with a seven vein rotor shown here. We'll have to see if that comes into play today. This sort of bulbous head on the PT does make it a smidge bigger than most, and its length is also a bit longer than most, at 4.8 inches comparing to the Mako's 4.5. The PT338 advertises a very healthy 500 foot-pounds max torque compared to Mako's 550 number. Let's see how they stack up. Our first test is called Working Torque, 5 seconds and forward. Up first is the newest model, the Snap-on PT338. The forward reverse switch on this one feels a lot less spongy compared to the PT650 we tested, but you can still hear that forward reverse bias that this gun has. Let's see how that shapes up. Two hundred and fifteen foot pounds, not particularly powerful. Hoping there is that famous snap-on forward reverse bias we normally see now. Next up is the Mako MT2765. Two hundred eighty-nine. 
that's a new compact impact record. Very nice. Next up is reverse, where most of these impacts live their life. This is our 10 second max torque test, 10 seconds in reverse. Here's the snap on. Two hundred and forty three, not a huge amount up on its working torque test and really flattening out towards the end, almost like we see on cordless tools when they don't have an adequate battery attached. Let's see if the Maco stubby can shake up some more records in the following test. Two hundred ninety three besting this snap on, but not really making a lot of waves there. As a matter of fact, a few compacts we've tested have made more than that on a max run, including a cordless in the form of the Makita. But all is not well in the Macco world at the moment. You'll notice this tool flatlines quite a bit, even more than the snap on here. That's because this thing is literally smoking. To be honest, we noticed this right out of the box when run with even pneumatic oil. It smelled like hot metal fumes. So we asked Joseph if he had noticed this and him using it, and he said, no, just give her the beans. But we do do three runs on each test, as you may know, and check out the second max run with the first one still on the graph. Yeah, not healthy. It got worse and worse from here. So time to open it up. We try to send tools that you guys generously loaned to us in better shape than when we found them. In this case, we planned on either fixing this tool or replacing it if we have to. But it turns out these bolts, yeah, these hex cap ones, these are the worst. These are true pain to remove. So we brought it over to our local air tool repair facility that also services Maco air tools for a look. So with some heat and a few double teaming tools, they got this one open and discovered a similar issue we found ourselves when motor swapping the IR NASCAR gun. The rotor, this time from the factory, was just a hair longer than the cylinder, resulting in wear against the faceplate again like we saw on the IR aftermarket rotors. They fixed this by polishing the rotor length down with increasing grit sandpaper and they're here back together with some new less buggered screws. It was good to go. Back to the dyno. Let's rerun its working torque test since it's not fuming anymore from the start. Let's see it. Three hundred and three now up from two eighty nine, re-breaking its own record, but Nothing crazy. It's max torque run though. That was getting worse and worse from friction tolerances. Let's see how it can improve things. All right, now that's what I like to see. A nice smooth curve all the way up to 361. That's not on still not seeing a smooth curve at all for yet unexplained reasons. Let's get to explaining it by seeing its best case scenario run. This is a 15 second test run at higher line pressure, 150 PSI static line pressure that drops to whatever the gun causes it to drop to. Here's the PT338. We're going to show on screen versus its max torque run because, well, we think that's interesting. Three hundred and eighty-six miles up on its max run and upwards of one hundred and ten foot pounds above the curve in spots. This is only a real difference of twenty-five to thirty psi or so between the ninety psi dynamic and one fifty psi static. That's the biggest change we've ever seen. The PT six fifty we tested, its larger brother, behaved very similarly, picking up way more power with higher line pressure compared to almost every other tool we've tested, but this stubby is on a whole nother level percentage wise. We ran its 243 foot pound max torque run over and over and over, and it was very consistent as you'll see. Our only explanation is that larger diameter air motor really prefers higher pressure to work properly. It goes from making less power than an average stubby to more power in this BCS test than even our current number one ranked Nano overall. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. That Matco, now peppier than ever, has yet to go. So let's see that.
444. Yet another record in the category, sort of dusting the already woken up Snap-on and, well, everything else in the size we've gotten our hands on. That low-end, out-the-gate performance of the Snap-on is hard to ignore, though. That large, high vane motor, when fed the right pressure, can really do some rust busting, we imagine. Let's see, though, if the rank chart has anything to say about these. There's some hefty coin involved to make either of these tools find their way to your toolbox, so can't imagine that helps with their scores. Starting down here for now, below the micro rigid, their power runs are turned into points as 22, 25, 39, and 30, 36, and 44. Look at that gap from max to BCS on the snap-on. Dang. They are both quite small, but the Mako is even shorter and made more beans. That's 98.7. Truly a standout for its size. The Snap-on advertises 500 in the Mako 550 for max or tightening torque. That's 77 and 81% of their claims today. So yeah, this column price, neither of them are going to be enjoying this. $500 in 373. That's 11.6 and 17.9 points. That totals 255.6 and 307.6, putting them into 3rd and 6th, mainly due to price reasons for both. But if you're Daddy Warbucks and don't care about cost, or you're just always running your guns at 150 PSI and think Snap-on shouldn't be penalized for that like this rank chart is doing, head on over to our average power rank chart, which is purely by power across the run. The Mako gun gets first place now by a somewhat wide margin, and the Snap-on benefits from that low-end out-the-gate performance and moves up into third, both of them bumping down that otherwise top-ranked Nano. We think if you've already dropped the coin on either of these impacts, you're probably very happy with your purchase already, and while we saw some hiccups with the Mako gun, it's the first we've seen, heard, or read about in reviews about this tool having any problems. We didn't do anything to it that should increase its power while we had it open. As a matter of fact, if this wasn't experiencing that tolerance friction Sanding down that rotor shorter would make less power, not more, on an already functioning impact wrench. But if money is no object, by our measurement, this should be the powerhouse compact that you can buy. Thanks for joining us. If you're new to the channel or just haven't clicked the subscribe yet, consider scrolling down and giving it a shot. We'll do our best to keep things interesting. Thanks for watching.